In today's video, I'll be doing a speed run of Digital SAT Practice Test 2's math sections. This will include section one and section two, each of which you are allowed 35 minutes for on the Digital SAT for a total of 70 minutes. Now, since this is a speed run, I will be doing it almost as fast as I can. Now keep in mind, I'll be giving you explanations and some tips throughout this. That way it's not just me going through and solving a bunch of problems. So with all that being said, make sure to like and subscribe and let's go ahead and get started with the first section. So we have question one, the line graph shows the percent of cars for sale at a used car lot on a given day by model year. I see on my Y axis, I have percent of cars for sale, X axis model year. For what model year is the percent of cars for sale the smallest? I see the smallest uh, percent of cars for sale is going to be occurring in 2014. So my answer there would be C. And I'll go ahead and zoom out a little bit so you guys can see this stuff uh, clearly for questions that are a little bit bigger. Okay, so here's question two now. For a particular machine that produces beads, 29 out of every 100 beads it produces have a defect. A bead produced by the machine will be selected at random. What is the probability of selecting a bead that has a defect? Well, we're, since we're selecting them at random, and 29 out of every 100 has a defect, that's going to be 29 out of 100. So we see that that'll be answer choice C. Moving on to question number three. Okay, so I got to switch sides of my screen. So while I do that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So that way you can see all my latest videos to help you prepare for the digital SAT. Okay, here's question number three. In the figure, line M is parallel to line N and line T intersects both lines. What is the value of X? Well, this angle here of 33 corresponds with this angle. So now we got that 33. We'll do 188 minus, I'm sorry, 180 minus 33. 180 minus 33. And that will leave us with 147 as the value of X. So our answer has got to be D. Moving on to question number four now. And I got to switch sides, so why don't you go ahead and hit that notification bell. That way you get notified of my new videos and you can continue to prepare well for the digital SAT. Okay, here's question four. What is the y-intercept of the graph shown? Y-intercept is going to be where x is zero. I see our y-intercept then will have a value of negative eight. So it'll be um, or a positive eight, zero and positive eight. Okay, so we've got options A, B, C, and D. D would have to be our answer there, zero and positive eight. Number five now, we've got total cost f of x in dollars. To lease a car for 36 months from a particular car dealership is given by f of x equals 36x plus 1,000, where x is the monthly payment in dollars. What is the total cost to lease a car when the monthly payment is 400? We know x represents the monthly payment amount, so that would be 36 times 400, all plus 1,000. I'll go ahead and put that in the calculator. Okay, and I know my handwriting is messy, but that is because I am trying to move fast since this is, after all, a bit of a speed run. So we've got answer choice C there. Once we put that in our calculator, we get $15,400. We can go ahead and move on to question number six. Okay, once again, I gotta go ahead and switch sides of my screen. Okay, this is probably gonna take about five seconds every time I gotta switch sides on my screen. So just letting you know that, uh, just so you can kind of, you know, if you wanted to add that time onto the end as far as like, you know, time that was wasted. But anyways, here's question six. Each side of a square link, each side of a square is a length of 45. What is the perimeter? Okay, perimeter of a square is gonna be uh, four times the side length. In this case, our side length is 45. So that would be 180 as the perimeter of the square. Moving on to question number seven. What is the positive solution to the given equation? Okay, keep in mind anytime you're asked positive or negative solution that you do provide that. In this case, let's go ahead and multiply both sides by x plus six. Okay, so now we got x times x plus six. Uh, and then we got 55. We'll subtract 55 to set it equal to zero. Okay, so now it's set equal to zero. All right, from here, let's go ahead and distribute that x. We'll get x squared plus 6x minus 5, 5 is equal to 0. We'll go ahead and factor uh, what multiplies to negative, five, negative 55. That sums to positive 6. Uh, we got 11 and 5. We'd have to have plus 11 to get that plus 6x. So then we've got these right here. We need the positive solutions. So the positive solution then would be x is equal to 5. Okay, so from here, we can go ahead and keep it moving. Okay, always pay attention to positive versus negative solutions. In this case, the positive, positive solution there is 5. An object travels at a constant speed of 12 centimeters per second. So we got 12 cm per second at this speed. What is the time in seconds that it would take for the object to travel 108 centimeters? So we need to sum up or calculate the distance of 108 centimeters. Okay, we need to solve for how many seconds. We'll have t seconds. Our seconds will cancel out. And as you can see, we have the correct setup. So from here, we've got 12 t is equal to 108. We divide both sides by 12. We get t is equal to 108 over 12. Okay, we put this in the calculator real quick, or actually we can just see from our answer choices that it's obviously not going to be these, it's got to be nine. But um, yeah, I mean, if you want to put it in your calculator, you can, but there's really no point. Okay, it's going to come out to nine. Moving on to number question nine now. Uh, we've got, let me go ahead and switch the side of the screen again. There it is, question number nine. We got two data sets, it looks like. Data set X and data set Y. The list gives the values in data sets X and Y, which statement correctly compares the mean of data set X and the mean of data set Y. 
okay, well, anytime I have two data sets, I'm always going to compare their values or their shapes. In this case, we'll compare their values. I see I've got the same values for the first four on both of them. Only difference is this 27 value, which is greater than um, what would ultimately be the mean and the maximum of data set X. So the mean for data set Y has to be higher because this 27 is greater than whatever the mean of data set X is. And we know that because it's also greater than the maximum of whatever data set X is, which is 13. Uh, so mean of data set X is greater than the mean of data set Y. No, the mean of data set X is less than the mean of data set Y. Yes. Moving on to number 10. Uh, a rocket contained 467,000 kilograms of propellant before launch, exactly 21 seconds <laughs> after launch. Okay, I just noticed I forgot to start my uh, my stopwatch. So I'm going to start that now. Um, and it looks like, yeah, so sorry about that. Forgot to start stopwatch. But you can see from whatever time the video is at. Um, so anyways, we'll keep going. Uh, number 10, a rocket contained 467,000 kilograms of propellant before launch. I mean, at this point, I might as well just get rid of the stopwatch. Let me just get rid of the stopwatch. Okay, there we go. Uh, a rocket contained 467,000 kilograms uh, of propellant before launch, exactly 21 seconds after launch. Uh, 362, 105 kilograms of this propellant remained. On average, how much uh, approximately how much propellant in kilograms of the rocket burn each second after launch. Okay, so we know that this is how much remains. Okay, this is how much we start with. So we need the difference to figure out how much we burn. So subtract 362105, and then divide by that 21 seconds that went by. Okay, we can go and put this in the calculator. All right, 467 triple O minus 362105, and then divide all that by 21. That gives us 4995. So that's answer choice A. Moving on to number 11. Okay, sorry about forgetting to, to start the stopwatch, but you'll be able to see from the whatever the video's at. All right, here's number 11. Uh, if 4x plus 2 is equal to 12, what's the value of 16x plus 8? Anytime I have a question like this where I'm asked for the value of something, it's not just like x or y, and I also have you know some value set equal to a constant, usually what I'll look to do is see if I can find a ratio. In this case, we see 4x plus 2. If we multiply that whole thing by 4, that'll give us that 16 um, X plus eight. So we can just take this 12 then and also multiply it by four and that'll give us 48. So our answer has gotta be B. We can go ahead and keep moving on to number 12 now. Okay, number 12, let me go ahead and switch sides on my screen again. All right, so switching sides, now's a great time to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn the notification bell on if you have not yet. An object is kicked from a platform equation uh, represents the situation where H is the height of the object above the ground in meters T seconds after it is kicked, which number represents the height in meters from which the object was kicked. In case we need to solve for the height in meters from which the object is kicked, well, that would be at T0 since no time has passed when it is, um, is first kicked. So that would be T of zero, so those become zero. We see that we have this positive nine then as the value of the height so our options are A, B, C, and D. And D is our only answer with nine, so D's gotta be correct. Moving on to 13, given equation defines a function F for what value of X does F of X reach its minimum? Okay, so what you can use here is, I believe it's negative B over two A, okay, is going to give you the X coordinate of your vertex. Okay, and I'm giving a bit of an explanation here, but basically what you have is if you have Y or F of X is equal to a quadratic, what you can do is you can do negative b over 2a and that'll get you the x coordinate of your vertex okay and that's going to be you know if you have something that's opening up like this since this a value is positive it'll open up like this okay it looks like a smiley face then that'll give you the x coordinate of your minimum um, since it is a positive a value if it was a negative a value it would get you the x coordinate of your maximum okay anyway so that being explained let's go ahead and just do negative b over 2a okay so that's going to be negative negative 50 gets us positive 50 negative negative 50 is positive 50 over two times Four, so that'll give us 50 over eight as the value uh, of X at which F of X reaches its minimum. Okay, we can go ahead and move on. So that's 50 over, okay, yep, that looks good. All right, 14 now, we got small business owner budgets 2,200 to purchase candles. So we got $2,200 to purchase candle. The owner must purchase a minimum of 200 candles. Okay, so minimum of 200 candles, so that will be a minimum. Uh, to maintain the discounted pricing, if the owner pays $4.90 per candle, so he's paying 4.9 per candle, to purchase small candles, we'll represent that as S, and 11.6 to purchase large candles, so plus 11.6 L for large candles. Uh, what is the maximum number of large candles the owner can purchase to stay within the budget and maintain the discounted pricing? Okay, so his budget is 2,200, which means that this sum must be greater than or equal to, and then he also needs to get at least 200 there. Okay, so that's S plus L, since that's total number of candles. Okay, from here, we need to solve for the uh, number of large candles. So we can go ahead and plug in uh, for S right here, a value that has L in it, and that would be 200 minus L must be less than or equal to S. Okay, from there, let's go ahead and plug that in. Okay, so 200 minus L. And then up here, we still got that plus 11.6 L. 
All right, let's erase this now. Okay, distribute this 4.9 to both of these. Uh, negative 4.9L plus 11.6L will leave us with 6.7L. Okay, and then we'll have 2200 minus 4.9 times 200. So let me put that in the calculator. Minus 4.9 times 200. Okay, that gets us 1220. 1220 must be less than or equal to 6.7L. Therefore, L must be uh, greater than or equal to uh, 1220 over 6.7. 6.7 which is 182. Uh, okay, so L can't be greater than that, so it looks like I, I missed my sign somewhere. Uh, this 2200, oh, that's just the wrong way. I just had it set up the wrong way, yeah. So the 2200, keep in mind that it needs to be greater than since that's his budget. So that's just a silly mistake, but very easy to fix. Okay, so we know that we get 182.08. Okay, we have to be less than that. Uh, and keep in mind that it's very easy to tell that I made that sort of switch on you know the direction of that, that sort of arrow right? Because it says what's the maximum number of large candles. So if I get that L must be greater than something, then obviously I had the sign, you know, the wrong way or made some other mistake. But in this case, it was very clear. It was just the sign was the wrong way. So anyways, since L has got to be less than 182.08, the maximum value of it would be 182. So answer is 182. Moving on to question number 15 now. Okay. Number 15, let me go ahead and switch sides. All right, I'm going to try to not explain as much because I, obviously I want to teach you guys, but I also do want to keep it, you know, like a speed run. And the linear function f, f of zero is eight. Okay. Y intercepts eight. F of one is uh, 12, which equation defines F, get rid of B, get rid of C, wrong y-intercepts. Between these two, what's the slope? I go over by one, I go up by four, and so there's got to be answer choice D. And then moving on to number 16, function F. Uh, F of W equals 6W squared gives the area of a rectangle in square feet. If it's width W feet and its length is six times its width, which of the following is the best interpretation of F of 14 equals 1176? Uh, well, this 14 represents uh, W, that's going to be our width, uh, and then this 1176 represents our area of the rectangle. We've got option A, if the width of the rectangle is 14 feet, that part is true, and the area of the rectangle is 1176 feet squared, that is true. That's the correct interpretation. Moving on to number 17 now, let me go ahead and switch sides again. Okay, now's a great time to go ahead and turn on that notification bell and comment when you are taking your digital SAT next and what your goal score is. Here's 17, circle has center O, circumference 144 pi, diameters uh, PR and QS, length of arc PS. Okay, so length of arc PS is twice the length of arc PQ. I'll call this uh, arc length X then, and this is twice the length, so that's 2X. What is the length of arc QR? Arc QR is gonna be the same as PS, uh, so therefore we can go ahead and do uh, 144 pi, okay, this, is going to be 72 pi then since the whole circumference is 144. Uh, what I just put there, that half circumference would be 72 pi. Then we have to take that and we see that we have uh, PS, which is the same as QR, is two thirds of that since it's uh, 2x over 3x. So multiply that by two thirds. Okay, that's going to give us 48 pi. 48 pi, and so there's got to be B. Moving on to number 18 now. A company that provides wheel washing tours takes groups of 21 people at a time. Company's revenue is $80 per adult and $60 uh, per child. Uh, if the company's revenue for one group consisting of adults and children was 1440, uh, how many people in the group were children? Okay, so 21 people at a time, so that'd be C plus A. Uh, we need to solve for C because we need to know how many people were children. Therefore, let's go ahead and plug in for the value of A. We know A is going to equal 21 minus C is equal to positive A. Okay, we go ahead and substitute that in here. Okay, 21 minus C plus 60A distribute, or this was plus 60C. Right, $60 per child, yep. Okay, we go and distribute the 80 there and the 80 there. Negative 80C plus 60C is gonna leave us with negative 20C. Okay, and then we have 80 times 21, which will give us, I believe, 1680. I'll quick check in the calculator. 21 times 80, 1680, yep. So we're gonna have 1680 minus uh, 20C is equal to 1440. From there, we go ahead and subtract 1680 from both sides. Okay, negative 20C, uh, we can quickly put this in the calculator. 1440 minus 1680. It's going to give us negative 240. Okay, negative 240. Divide both sides by negative 20. C is going to equal negative 240 over uh, negative 20, and that will give us 12, I believe. Yeah, 12. Okay, so our answer there has got to be C. Moving on to number 19 now. Okay, let me go ahead and switch sides of my screen. Now's a great time to go ahead and like this video if you have not already. We'd really, really appreciate that. Here's number 19. Function h is defined by h of x equals 4x plus 28. Graph of y equals h of x in the xy plane as an x-intercept at a0 and y-intercept at 0b, where a and b are constants. What's the value of a plus b? Always pay attention to what I answer with. In this case, we need to solve for a and b in order to get the value of a plus b, unless we can get a plus b without it. Let's go ahead and take a look. So it uh, looks like in this case, we are going to have to solve for a and b. So we'll have a equals right here. We'll have b equals 
All right, let's go ahead and start with A. A is gonna be where we have our uh, Y value as zero. So that would be zero is equal to four X plus 28. Subtract 28 from both sides and then divide by four. Uh, negative 28 over four, give us seven, ne uh, negative seven as the value. Okay, I'll quickly write that out so you can see what I did. Four X plus 28. Okay, we would subtract four X from, or I guess we'll subtract 28 from both sides, right? You get negative 28 is equal to four X, divide both sides by four, get the value of X. You see that's gonna be negative seven. All right, moving on to B, you have zero for X, you put in zero for X, and then you're gonna get zero plus 28. So 28 would be the value of B. Uh, from there, what's the value of A plus B? Okay, 28 plus negative seven, same as 28 minus seven. Okay, so that's gonna get you 21. All right, moving on to number 20. One of the factors of all of this is a or x plus b, where b is a positive constant. What is the smallest possible value of b? Okay, this it's factorable, but I think it would take a while to go ahead and factor that. So I, this is a great case to use Desmos for. So let's go ahead and pull up Desmos. I'll show that to you. This is the digital SAT, so you will have access to Desmos. On the digital SAT, let's go ahead and plug this in. So I'm going to type this out. So you may hear me be silent a minute because this mic is very sensitive to me not speaking directly into it, and my keyboard is off to the side. Okay, so I'm just typing this in. Uh, keep in mind that you always wanna make sure that you are typing in the correct equation, because if you're not, you're gonna get the question wrong. So always make sure that once you're finished typing it in, you do go back and look to make sure that you typed it in correctly. Okay, so in this case, you got two X cubed plus 42 X squared plus 208 X, which I do here. I'll go ahead and zoom in now so we can see where our zeros are at. Okay, keep in mind that it says X plus B. What is the smallest possible value of B? Well, in order for, uh, if we have X plus B, that means that our zeros gotta be negative. Um, because it says b is a positive constant. Okay, so me taking a look at the graph. Okay, we've got one at zero, but we know that that can't be it because b is a positive constant. Okay, so we need the smallest value, so that would be at negative eight, not negative 13, but negative eight. Now keep in mind, the value of b then has to be eight. Okay, b is a positive constant. And it's gotta be eight because if you have a zero at negative eight, then you would have to have x plus eight. And let me write this off to the side so you can see it. Okay, uh, or I guess I gotta hide Desmos to show you. Okay, keep in mind this is because x plus eight equals zero, then you'd get that x equals negative eight. So the value of b has got to be eight. All right, so from here, let's go ahead and keep on chugging along. We got question number 21, given system of equations, a is a positive constant, exactly one real solution for the system. What's the value of a? Okay, substitution, put in this negative 1.5. So we got negative 1.5 is equal to x squared plus eight x plus a. Uh, system's got exactly one real solution. So that means we're gonna be having b squared minus four ac is equal to zero. Okay, so from here, let's go ahead and get this set equal to zero. So we're gonna have x squared plus eight x plus a plus 1.5. Since we gotta add 1.5 to each side to set it equal to zero. From here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that c is equal to a plus 1.5, and then I'll have zero is equal to x squared plus nine x, or wait, hang on, why is that not, or that's a, okay, yeah, my bad. All right, let me erase this. It'll be zero is equal to x squared plus eight x plus c. Okay, b squared is gonna be eight squared. That'll give us 64 minus four times a. a is just one times c. Okay, and that's all gotta set equal to zero. So four c is equal to 64. 64 is equal to four c. Divide both sides by four. You're just gonna get the value of c. 64 over four is gonna leave you with 16. 16 is the value of c, but we need to get the value of a since that's what we're asked to answer with. So we've got 16 is equal to uh, a plus 1.5. That means that we subtract one and a half from both sides. That'll leave us with 14 and a half is equal to the value of a. So our answer there is gonna be 14.5. Okay, that's a decimal, 14.5. Moving on to number 22 now. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch sides of my screen. Okay, I know I'm giving a lot of explanation here. Um, it's kind of a little bit difficult to balance, you know, doing a speed run while also explaining what I'm thinking. Uh, but anyways, here's 22. F of X is equal to all this. The function F is given, which of the values represents Y is equal to F of X minus three. Okay, well, if F of X is up here, I just need to translate that down three units. I see I'm given my zeros basically. So it'll be negative six, uh, negative five, and at four, negative six, negative five, four, negative six, negative five, four. It looks like all the X values are that. Yes, they are. Okay, that's good. Uh, the Y values then will all have to be at negative three since you know zero times anything is zero and then we're translating it down to three. So all of these Y values must be at negative three. Uh, the only place we have that is an answer choice B. So B would have to be our answer there. We can go ahead and keep moving on. Um, I don't know how much you guys were able to see that question. I hope all of it, because my, my screen does crop off some of it, but uh, I, I, I'm not gonna scroll back up. Here's 23. Uh, for the function Q, the value of Q of X decreases by 45%. Uh, for every increase in the value of X by one, if Q of zero is 14, so initial value is 14, which equation defines Q. Okay, initial value is 14, A and B are gone. Difference between C and D is whether we're increasing or decreasing. We're decreasing by 45%. Okay, so our answer there's gotta be answer choice C. Moving on to number 24. Okay, I gotta switch sides. Now's a great time to go ahead and hit that notification bell. Make sure it is turned on so you get notified when I post 
new videos. All right, here's question number 24. I'll go ahead and scroll down so you can see more of it. Graph of y equals f of x plus 14 is shown. Which equation defines function f? Okay, key thing, you always want to pay attention to any sort of transformations, whether that's up, down, left, right. Okay, in this case, it's uh, the graph of y equals f of x plus 14 is shown. Which equation defines function f? Okay, so we need to define f. Now keep in mind this graph's translated up by 14. So let's go down 14 and then we'll draw f. So we start at two, in order to go down 14, we gotta end at negative 12, which would be about right here. Uh, slope would be the same since our only transformation is down. So it looks something like this. Um, so we have that y uh, intercept. Now keep in mind this is at negative 12. Let me draw right negative 12 right there. Okay, because we're down 14. Uh, defines function f. Okay, all of them have the same slope, so that's chill. We can go and look at the y-intercepts. Uh, we got these that are positive. We know that's not the case. And then we got negative 14, negative 12. We know it's got to be at negative 12. Uh, so our answer there's got to be a. We can go and move on to number 25. Let me go ahead and switch the side of my screen so you can see the function or the question. Uh, in this case, it's a triangle question. Okay, so we've got side lengths of right triangle RST are given. Triangle RST is similar to triangle UVW, where S corresponds to uh, S corresponds to v and t corresponds to w yep so it's just in the same order that's good what is the value of tangent w okay let's go ahead and draw rst okay i don't really care if these are like proportional at all um okay so we've got rst we're told that t is what which one's the right angle does it say a uh, triangle rst is similar side lengths of right triangle rst are given okay well we'll just use 52 um and then we got let's go r s T, okay, R to T is 52, R to S is 20, and then S to T is 48. Okay, from here, we're asked, what's the tangent W? Uh, let's find what W corresponds to. W is gonna correspond to T. So we just need the value of tangent T since these are similar. All right, so we need tangent T. Okay, we can use SOHCAHTOA, so opposite over adjacent, tangent opposite over adjacent, uh, 20 over 48, so that's not an option. We need to simplify. Uh, let's go ahead and divide both sides by, looks like we can do four, so that would give us five over 12. That's gonna be answer choice B. Okay, so we can go ahead and move on to number 26 now. I'm gonna have to switch sides on my screen, so now's a great time to go ahead and comment and let me know what your goal score is and what date you are planning on taking the SAT, or the digital SAT for that matter. Here's number 26. We got one gallon of paint will cover 220 square feet of a surface, uh, so 220 square feet is what one gallon of paint will cover, so that's the amount of square feet we get per gallon. Uh, a room has a total wall area of W square feet, okay, so wall area is W. Which equation represents total amount of paint P in gallons? You need to paint the walls of the room twice, okay, so we got to paint the walls of the room twice. We know the total wall area is W, so we need whatever this is to equal 2W, okay, we need to get rid of gallons, okay, so we need the amount of paint P in gallons, so P gallons, our gallons will cancel, we're going to be left with square feet equals square feet, since 2W is representative of our area in square feet, so that's good. Okay, so from here, let's go ahead and write this out in a way that, you know, doesn't have as many letters in it, just so it's easier for me to show you. That's going to be 220 multiplied by P for our number of gallons is equal to 2w. We need to solve for what p is equal to, so simple rearrangement here. We're just going to have p is going to equal 2w over 220. And as you can see, we can pull out a 2 in the top and the bottom. When we do that, we're going to be left with w over 110. Okay, so we got w over 110. It's going to be its choice A. Moving on to number 27 now. Let me go ahead and switch sides of my screen so you can see number 27. The number A is 110% greater than the number B. Uh, the number B is 90% less than 47. What is the value of A? Okay, I would have written this out as I was writing, but I was moving my screen. So we've got Number A is 110% greater than number B. So A is equal to uh, 2.1B since it's 110% greater, not 110% of. Uh, number B is 90% less than 47. So 0 0.1 times 47 is the same as that. What is the value of A? Well, this will equal 4.7. That's gonna equal 2.1 times 4.7. Okay, let's go ahead and put this in the calculator and that will give us our answer. 2.1 times 4.7 gives us 9.87. Okay, so A is gonna equal 9.87. Okay, so 9.87 be the answer there. We can go ahead and keep it moving on. Okay, keep it moving on to our next section. So this will be section number two. I'm gonna try to do not as much explaining. I keep saying that, but like I said, I want you guys to actually understand what I'm looking for and what I'm doing, not just watch me solve problems on my own in my head. There are 55 students in Spanish club. A sample of Spanish club students was selected at random and asked whether they intend to enroll in a new study program. Of those surveyed, 20% responded they intended to enroll in the study program based on the survey, which of the following is the best estimate of the total number of Spanish club students who intended to enroll in the study program. Well, 20% intend to enroll, so that's 0 0.2. There are 55 students in the club. So 0 0.2 times 55 is gonna give us uh, I guess I'll just put that in the calculator real quick. 55 times 0.2 gets us 11. Okay, so 11, answer choice A. 
Moving on to number two, Jay walks at a speed of three miles per hour and runs at a speed of five miles an hour. He walks for W hours and runs for uh, R hours for a combined total of 14 miles. Okay, total is 14 miles. It's equal to the sum of the amount of miles he walked plus the sum that he ran. So that'd be 3W plus 5R equals 14. Uh, these are equal to 112. That doesn't make sense. Um, B, I don't know why we have fractions. Okay, it's just uh, three, which is the amount of miles he walks per hour times W, the amount of hours that he walks. So it's real, real simple for that one. That's got to be A. Moving on to number three now. I got to stop explaining so much, but like I said, I want you guys to actually understand what I am looking at. And it's hard to do that without saying at least like a couple sentences each time. All right, here's number three. Okay, there it is. All right, let's go ahead and scroll up so you can see it from the start. Scatterplot shows the relationship between two variables, X and Y. Line of best fits also shown. Anytime I have a scatterplot like this, I'm looking at Y intercept. I'm looking at slope. Slope's positive. Y intercept somewhere around three. Which of the following equations best represents line of best fit shown? Okay, we need positive Y intercept, so I'll go ahead and get rid of C and D. We need positive slope, so our answer's got to be A. Moving on. Okay, those scatterplot questions with lines of best fit should be easy money. You basically just look for Y intercept and then whether the, po the slope's positive or negative. And that's usually pretty much about it. Um, so they're, they're super easy and super quick. So don't take too long on them. Uh, graph of Y equals F of X is shown in the XY plane. What's the value of F of zero? Okay, well, F of zero is just gonna be our Y intercept. We see that that's three. Okay, so answer there should be answer choice D. Moving on to number five now. Okay, we've got an expression here. A uh, bunch of exponents, M, P, Q, Z are positive. Let's go ahead and combine. So we got M to the fourth times M. That'll give us with M to the fifth. Since we add those exponents, Q to the four times Q to the five. That'll give us Q to the nine. And then we got Z to the negative one times Z to the three. That'll give us Z squared. So we got to add them three. Um, plus negative one is obviously two, right? So I just wanted to explain that very quickly. And then we've got these all here. Only answer there has got to be B. Uh, moving on to number six now. I'm going to go ahead and switch sides of my screen so you can see. Now's a great time to go ahead and send a super thanks if you are finding this video helpful. Super thanks really helped us support the channel, and I would really, really appreciate it. Here's question six. What is the median of the data so shown? Get rid of minimum, maximum, minimum, maximum, minimum, maximum, minimum, and maximum, and we are going to get 79. Okay, so 79 is our median. Now, keep in mind that if this was an even data set, you brought it down to two numbers. For example, let's say that they were two and they were six. It was an even number. You would add them together and then divide by two, right? And then that would get you, in this case, four. Just wanted to quickly explain that. Uh, me explaining again, not very speed runner of me, but uh, it's okay. Okay, so go ahead and circle 79. All right, moving on to number seven. Uh, what value of x is the solution to the given equation? Go ahead and subtract 40 from both sides. That's going to give us 55 is equal to x, so our answer there got to be 55. Moving on to number eight. Solution to the given system of equations is xy. What is the value of x plus y? See if I can get that uh, by adding or subtracting my bottom equation from the top equation. I got 5x and 4x. I'll add them then. 5x plus negative 4x. That'll give me just x. And then I've got x plus y. And that's going to be 15 plus negative 2, which is 13. Value of x plus y then is 13. Answer's got to be C. Moving on to number 9. Okay, let me go ahead and switch sides of my screen. Now's a great time to go ahead and share my channel to your Snapchat story if you have not. It's a great way to help you, uh, for you to help support me and also to help your friends get better at the digital SAT so you guys can maybe go to, to great colleges together. Here's number nine. Given function G models the number of gallons of gasoline that remains from a full gas tank in a car after driving M miles. Okay, so keep in mind this is the amount that's remaining according to the model about how many gallons of gasoline are used to drive each mile. Well, we're losing 0 0.05 uh, gallons of gas for each mile that we drive. So our answer has got to be A, 0 0.05, number 10 now. Given equation relates to the numbers B, X, and Y. Which equation correctly expresses X in terms of B and Y? We're just rearranging to solve for X, or to get it in terms of X. Multiply by Y, divide by 11. Okay, 11 times 7 is going to give us 77. So we're going to have, uh, what is that? Is that Y? Yeah, Y over 77B is equal to X. Okay, Y over 77B is equal to X. We can go ahead and keep it moving. Number 11 now, I'm going to switch sides of my screen. Now's a great time to go ahead and share my channel to your Instagram story if you've not done that already. It's a great way to help support the channel. All right, here's number 11. Graphs of the given equation of the xy plane intersect at the point xy. What is the possible value of x? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and substitute in 76 there. 76 equals x squared minus 5. Add 5 to both sides. 81 is equal to x squared. Therefore, x must equal 9 by taking the square root of each side. Uh, plus or minus 9, actually, because x squared equals 81. So that could be plus or minus 9. Uh, so in this case, that'd be minus 9. All right, moving on to number... 12, we got point x53 is a solution to the given system of inequalities. Uh, which of the following could be the value of x? Well, if y is 53, we see 53 is obviously going to be greater than 14. We plug in 53 there. So we're going to have 4x plus 53 plus 53 is, or must be uh, less than 18. Go ahead and subtract 53 from both sides. It's going to give us negative 35. Must be greater than uh, 4x. Okay, from there we'll go ahead and divide by 4. x must be less than negative 35 over 4. 
Okay, so negative 35 over four is one quarter less than um, negative nine. Okay, so X would have to be negative nine, okay, because all these other ones don't satisfy that inequality. We can go ahead and keep moving then. Number 13, I'm going to go and switch sides of my screen. Now's a great time to go ahead and like the video if you've not done that already. And here's number 13, out of 300 seeds that were planted, 80% sprouted. How many of the seeds sprouted? That's pretty simple. 80% we represent as a decimal of 0 0.8. Multiply that by that 300. Okay, that's gonna give us 240. So 240, I'll write that a little bit neater. 240, okay, moving on. 14 function f is defined by f of x is 4x. For what value of x does f of x equal eight? Well, that'd be eight is equal to four x divided both sides by four. You're gonna get that x is equal to eight over four, which is two. So two would be the value of x. Always pay attention to what you're asked to answer with. Okay, it's just the value of x. Which expression is equivalent to this right here? Okay, I see I've got um, x minus seven, x minus seven. Um, see if I can pull that out in my denominator, 2x minus 14. I can pull out that as being equal to x minus 7 multiplied by 2. So that's good. Let's go ahead and rewrite this then. All right, so we're going to have 8x times x minus 7 all over 2 times x minus 7. These will obviously cancel. And then we have minus 3 times x minus 7 all over 2 times x minus 7. As you can see, these will cancel as well. We can go ahead and rewrite that as being equal to 8x minus, uh, okay, yeah, we got to get it in a form where it's just one dividing sign. So that, yep, that'll be 8x minus 3 over 2 then. That's an equivalent form, or 8x minus 3 over 2. Yeah, it's, I don't know if I said 8x minus 2 over 2, but I meant to say 8x minus 3 over 2. Anyways, that's going to be answer choice B. Uh, we can go and move on to number 16 now. I'm going to switch sides of my screen. Okay, now's a great time to go ahead and send a super thanks. If you are finding this video is helpful, here's question 16. Line P is defined by 2y plus 18x equals 9. Line R is perpendicular to line P. Always pay attention to perpendicular and parallel. Uh, what is the slope of line R? Okay, well, line P, let's go and find the slope of that. Uh, we're going to use negative A over B. Okay, so that's going to be equal to negative 18 over uh, 2. So that would be equal to negative 9. Therefore, our slope for line R would have to be positive 1 over 9. So our answer there's got to be C. Okay, keep in mind that's just negative or reciprocal. Moving on to number 17. Function F models the number of coupons a company sent to their customers at the end of each year. T represents the number of years since 1998. If Y equals F of T is graphing the TY plane, which is the following's best interpretation of the Y intercept of the graph in, the, in this context, Y intercept is going to be where T of 0 is. Okay, we see that that's going to be 8,000 is the initial value. Um, that's going to be number of years since the end of 1998. So this would be at the end of 1998. There were 8,000 uh, coupons sent to the customers. Okay, so we got option A, est minimum no estimated number of coupons the company sent to their customers during the five years was 1428, no. B, estimated number of coupons the company sent to their customers during the five years, no. This is during the first year. Uh, C, estimated number of coupons companies sent to their customers at the end of 1998 was 1428, no. And then D, estimated number of coupons companies sent to their customers at the end of 1998 was 8,000, yes. Okay, moving on to number 18 now. Now's a great time to go ahead and subscribe if you have not already. Okay, I've got tons of really, really great digital SAT prep content on my channel for you, so be sure to subscribe. Here's 18 triangle XYZ, similar to triangle RST, such that XYZ correspond to RST, respectively. Measure of Z is 20, and then we have 2XY equals RS. What's the value, or what is the measure of angle T? Well, measure of angle T, uh, we see that measure of angle T corresponds to angle Z. They're similar triangles. Their angle measures must be the same. This is irrelevant. Okay, our answer there's got to be 20, so that would be C. Moving on to number 19, one of the equations in a system of two linear equations is given. System has no solution. No solutions means it looks like this. Okay, so they've got different y-intercepts, same slope. Which equation could be the second equation in the system? We need same slope, different y-intercept. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and in this case, I'm just going to add, I'll just make this y is equal to 6x plus 18. That's the same equation, so that's infinitely many. And then option B, that would just be y is equal to 6x plus 22, different y-intercepts, same slope. B's got to be our answer, number 20. Uh, what is the area in square centimeters of a rectangle with a length of 34 centimeters and a width of 29 centimeters? This is just simple calculation of area, length times width. They're both in the same units of centimeters, so we don't have to do any unit conversions at all. Uh, that's going to be 986, 986. Moving on to number 21. i got to switch sides of my screen, so give me about five seconds. Go ahead and switch those sides. And now is a great time to go ahead and drop a comment. Let me know any videos you want me to make in the future. Okay, here's question number 21. The solution to the given system of equations is xy. What's the value of x minus y? Uh, in this case, I'm trying to see if there's any way I can get to x minus y off the bat. And it does not look like that is easily possible. Um, so I'll just solve for x and then solve for y and then do x minus y. 
All right, uh, let's go ahead and use substitution. We've got what y is equal to, so we're gonna have four times four x plus one is equal to uh, 15x minus eight. Okay, so 16x plus four equals 15x minus eight. All right, from here I'll subtract 15x from both sides and then subtract four, so I'm gonna erase this right here. Okay, that's gonna leave me with x is equal to negative 12. Okay, so x is negative 12. Now we can go ahead and solve for y. We're gonna use the easier of the equations, which is the top one. y is equal to four times negative 12, which is negative 48. And then we got negative 48 plus one, which will give us negative 47. Okay, so now we need x minus y, so negative 12 minus negative 47, same as plus 47. That's gonna leave us with positive 35 as our answer, positive 35. Moving on to number 22 now. How many distinct real solutions does a given equation have? Okay, this does not look easily factorable. Um, so I will graph it. Yeah, I'll just graph, I'll just graph this one. Okay, so let me pull up Desmos. Okay, if you don't see, if you see a question like this, it's not, or at least it doesn't look easily factory to you, factorable to you off the bat, then you can just use Desmos. Uh, so 5x squared plus 10x, 5x squared plus 10x uh, plus 16. Okay, it looks like I typed that plus 10x. Okay, always make sure that what you typed in is what is on there. 5x squared plus 10x plus 16. I see it is. All right, as we can see, it does not cross that x-axis anywhere, so there's going to be no real solutions. We can go and hide Desmos again now. Okay, our answer is going to be zero, and we can go ahead and move on. Okay, that's a pretty good example of a question that Desmos is useful for. 23, certain park has an area of this number of square yards. What is the area in square miles? Anything underlined pay attention to? Unit conversion question. We're dealing with square units, so therefore we have to square our conversion at, uh, unit as well. So that's going to be 11, 8, 6, 11, 8, 6, 3, 8, 0, 8. Okay, and then we got to divide that by 1760 squared in order to get to the number of square miles. All right, so put this in the calculator and we'll see what we get. So it's 11863808. Uh, we'll divide it by 1760 squared. And that'll give us 3.83, so that'll be answer choice B. Now we can go ahead and keep on moving along. We got question number 24 now. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch sides on my screen. There's 24. Okay, hopefully this is a uh, big enough text for you. I really can't zoom in because then I just end up having to zoom in and zoom out all the time and it just wastes a bunch of time. But here's 24, which the following equations represents a circle in the XY plane that intersects the Y axis at exactly one point. Okay, so we got circle. We need to intersect Y axis at one point. Circles and triangles questions I always draw out. Okay, so we need to intersect at exactly one point. All right, so all of these have 16. So that means my radius is four. Since 16 is R squared, take square root, you're gonna get R is four. Okay, so R is four. If we're intersecting Y axis at exactly one point, then we don't really care about our Y values really. It's just about the X value, right? Because we need to be something like this or something like um, this. Like the Y coordinate really doesn't matter. So we need to ultimately either be at four or at negative four, or wait a minute, our radius is four. Okay, radius is four. Okay, our center needs to be at, our center would need to be at that four, right? Because the radius is four. The diameter isn't four, the radius is. So we would need to look something like this, right? There we go. Okay, where that center is at four or at negative four. So let me redraw that one too. Okay, negative four. Right, so it could be center here or center there. Um, so if we look at our options, D's got center zero, uh, B and A got center of eight, um, and then this option here would have center at four, so that would work. Okay, so C would have to be our answer there. We can go and move on to number 25. Uh, we've got triangle number 25. Okay, triangles A, B, C, and D, E, F. Angles B and E each have measure of 27. Uh, so B and E here. Okay, C and F each have 41. C and F correspond. Okay, so we got similar triangles. Which piece of information is sufficient to determine whether triangle is congruent? To triangle DEF, congruent means the exact same, so they'd be similar triangles and they have the exact same side lengths as well. Right now we know they are similar, but we don't know that they have the exact same side length, so we do need additional information. Length of side AB, that's just one side length. We would need to know uh, the side length of the um, corresponding side from one triangle and the corresponding side of the other. We don't need any more angle measures. Answer's gotta be C. Moving on to number 26 now. Okay, let me go ahead and switch sides on my screen so you can see it. 
Okay, now's a great time to go ahead and like the video if you have not. If you made it this far into the video, you should definitely have liked it. Here's number 26. Uh, we got data set A, data set B, uh, two data sets of 23 integers are each summarized in the histogram shown. For each of the histograms, the first interval represents frequency of integers greater than or equal to 10, but less than 20. Okay, so greater than or equal to 10, but less than 20 means we're going to 10 to 19. Second interval represents frequency of integers greater than or equal to 20, but less than 30. So we'd be going 20 up to 29. Um, keep in mind it's integers, so it's not 29 point something because they're integers. Okay, so 20 to 29 and so on, um, but less than 30 and so on. What's the smallest possible difference between the mean of data set A and the mean of data set B? Smallest possible difference. Okay, so whenever you have two data sets, I've said this before, but you want to look at what their values are. And um, if it's a histogram or some sort of drawing, right, you want to pay attention to the shape as well. In this case, we can look at the shapes. Uh, looks like they're the same shape here. Okay, we go from uh, three to four to seven to nine, three, four, seven, nine, three, four, seven, and nine. Okay, so we got same shape. One is just shifted over to the left by 10 units. Okay, so ultimately we need the smallest possible difference between the mean of data set A and the mean of data set B. Well, the mean of data set A is gonna have to be bigger since it's like 20 to 29, not inclusive of 30 and so on. So data set A has gotta be bigger. So we're gonna need the smallest possible value for the mean of data set A and the largest possible value for the mean of data set B because if we're drawing this just like logically, right, we need, if this is A, we need smallest value of it and the largest value of B, okay, just like pay attention to the differences in their heights, right, in order to get the smallest distances between the means. So let's go and get the smallest uh, of data set A. Okay, so we would do that by doing uh, three times 20 and then plus four times, uh, that'd be smallest possible A, yeah, four times 30. And then so on, and then that would be all over like the 23, uh, since that's how many there are, right? Because it's three plus four, plus seven, plus nine. So that gets us that over 23. Is my camera blurry? Okay, there we go. Anyways, okay, and then from there, uh, we would also have to then subtract the mean from data set B. So for subtracting this mean from data set B as well, we would also have to do uh, the three, and let me actually write this minus sign up higher. Okay, that would be minus the three and then multiplied by the 20, or not 20, because we're doing from the, the maximum, so 19. Okay, so three times 19 plus four times 29, um, four times 29, and so on. Okay, and the key thing that I'm recognizing here is we've got the difference of one between these, right? There's the difference of the 20 and the 19, the 30 and the 29, and that will continue on. So ultimately the difference is gonna be over one. You're still gonna be dividing by 23 since there's the same number total um, of data points. So ultimately the difference will have to be one there. So our answer there would be B. We can get rid of uh, A, C, and D. We can go and move on then to 27. Right triangle has legs with lengths of 24 centimeters and 21 centimeters. If the length of this triangle of hypotenuse in centimeters can be written in the form three root D, where D is an integer, what is the value of D? Okay, so we need to rewrite. All right, let's go ahead and draw the triangle out real quick. We've got right triangle, 24, 21 as the leg lengths, 24 and 21. Hypotenuse then is gonna be 24 squared plus 21 squared, and then take the square root of that. Okay, so that's gonna be root 1017. So root 1017, root 1017. Okay, we need to get this in the form three root D. So we have to pull a three out somehow to do that. We can do 1017 over nine since three squared is nine. So 1017 over nine. Okay, we get that because once again, three squared is nine and we need to pull three out. Okay, so that would equal nine times 113. Okay, and obviously that can then be written, rewritten as root nine times root 113. I just wanna show you the steps here. Okay, 113. And then this root nine obviously is the same as three, so then you get that three root 113. So the answer for the value of D would have to be 113. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and consider sending a super thanks to help support my channel. Additionally, please drop a comment below letting me know what videos you want me to make in the future. And if you are looking for additional educational services that I offer, please check out my website, haydenrody.com.